As always, call someone, text someone, even take a message and put it around a pigeon and send it to someone and tell them that you appreciate them. My name is Dr. Avery L. Taylor and welcome to the N1 File. Hope you had a beautiful weekend. Hope things are going well for you. I hope things are just up and up um, to go. We're in the last quarter of the year. The last quarter. Before we start a new year, um, it'll be 2020. At this time of year, when, when we look at the medical field, we look at wellness, education, and just plain behavior science, uh, we find out that this is a very crucial time for a lot of family members. I'm not saying other times are not crucial. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying the last part of the year, we have found out through research um, in the area of behavior science is that many people go into depression this time of year. Um, I got an email and I want to tell the gentleman thank you. Uh, and I do appreciate all emails, all phone calls. I want you to know, even the ones that kind of sarcastic, I thank you for that. Just to me, effect, you're listening. I appreciate your time because you don't have to. The question, the question was asked, do I really feel that calling a person or texting a person really helps by telling them that you appreciate them? And I say yes, because when we deal with behavior science or behavior health, there's a certain thing about a, D, uh, a DNC or how we made up. We appreciate people feeling, you know, feeling good about us. Um, we appreciate people just saying thank you. It's just a human nature or human behavior of who we are. So when you take a little time, just just make a phone call and just say. Hey, Aunt Gertrude, or hey, Uncle Tan, or whoever it is, or maybe a teacher, maybe just a friend, a person on the corner, whoever it is, just say, the smile you gave me, I thank you for it. Just that little, just that little something. It really can brighten a person's day. And sometimes when we are happy or when we are less stressed, we make better decisions of our life. But when we are stressed, angry, sometimes we don't make good decisions. Remember I told you on some other shows that our body makeup was not created or made to be overloaded. It just wasn't made, made to be that way. And when we overload who we are, we come with some bad decisions. And in life, as life is made up, sometimes one bad decision would take years to turn that around. And it becomes a part of who we are. This time of year, in this fourth quarter, many of our seniors will analyze their life. And sometimes they go in, I guess a bad word would be a funk, or they go in, we call it depression. And sometimes people go in and they take a years to come out of it. Um, and sometimes they don't see their value or they don't feel their value. And they think that life itself is unfair to them. And they go into depression, and most of the time you may go to a doctor, and a doctor may tell you, get on this medication here. And they may put you on this medication, they put you on that medication, and one medication has a side effect, and then, then I need to give you another prescription for that side effect. And it goes on and on and on and on. And now I'm just a walking medicine chest or cabinet. So it's good to just call people every now and then and say, hey, let's call a check on you. Just call, seriously. Let's call, let you know, especially our seniors. Because they're on the last end of life. Many of them think that way. And many, many of them are, are that way. And what happened is they don't feel appreciated. 
maybe they reared a child and they had ex they had high expectation for this particular child and the child decided to go another another direction and now most of our children we live in a global society so what happened is we don't marry the person down the street or we don't connect you may live here in, in the memphis area but your child may live in washington state or oregon so a lot of parents now are kind of left behind this is one of the reasons why you're going to find in the next uh, 48 to 60, 60 months, you're going to find that people, there's going to be a huge increase in healthcare facilities. Huge increase. Because what happened is a lot of our seniors can't take care of themselves now. They're up in age. Kids are gone. Kids live their own life. And many times, Many times that we cannot go live with our kids, where before that the, we lived in a a uh, society where the kids live with uh, um, the kids live with the parents, and the parents go live with the kids. Those things are changing now. So you're gonna find a lot of uh, parents now will go to a facility. Um, just here in the Memphis area, we're building a um, another um, uh, home for soldiers to live in up in the, up in the Arlington area. It's already been approved. We have to raise our pot of the money to build that. We have one in the Oxford area that is filled and has a huge waiting list for veterans to live in. And if, if you ever get a chance to go to a veteran's home, Go. It's just, it's, just, it's just just a more than a visit. And you will find that a lot of veterans, they are lonely. Um, and some has no family members. And they go into depression. And once a person goes into depression, it affects some of their health. Sometimes your, your digestion system does, doesn't work right. Sometimes your movement system, your motor system doesn't, doesn't work right. Because what happened is, the brains is telling you that you unappreciated. The brains is telling you that things are not right. And the brains begin to tell you all these things and you begin to accept all these things and then life itself become hopeless. So if, whenever you see the federal government, um, they are reaching out to build more facilities for the veteran because he or she are living a life by themselves that should put some little indicators out there. Also, you're going to find another push uh, now on the rise. They are, they are building more mental institution for people because anxiety. And they're moving toward depression. They, they have a tough time coming out of that. Um, there was a movement, I want to say, about 30 or 40 years ago, we had um, mental institution institution more publicized than than they are now um, and they stay on on medication this would be a good study um, for a nonprofit and a good study for young research students is to find better ways uh, in treating people who are in depression um, versus medication I'm not against medication, but I am against over being over medicated. Now, I know we pray. I get that piece. I know we have counseling. I get that piece. But depression can ha can happen to anyone. I mean, anyone. You can be wealthy and go in depression. Somebody said, with all that money they have and all of this, why are they depressed? You can be poor. And go in depression. So depression across all economics, education, gender, it crosses over. My advice: if you are dealing with something and you having problems with it, make a decision. If it's not life or death, let it go. Let it go. Another advice. And these are these are only research studies that don't look for life to be perfect. 
And if you can, don't you try to be perfect. And I'm dealing with the definition of perfect. Um, if you email me, I send you a copy of one of my books. Don't get, don't send me too many emails because I pay for the postage of it. Okay? And I talk about there, uh, there are eight type of people. And some people are tribal, and some people are just absolute. Some people just want to be perfect. And when they cannot be perfect, they get frustrated. And that's added pressure on them. And some people, they're all type of people, but even these all type of people, be aware that you can slip in depression. You can. Um, I know that a lot of a lot of our students are going to school and they're going to all type of careers. Some some students are going to career to make more money, more money, and some kids are going to career to deal with uh, uh, behavior health or behavior science. If you want to go into a career and be very rewarding, not saying the other ones are not rewarding, behavior health or behavior science is a field that is very wide open and very much needed. Because every year, the fourth quarter, from Thanksgiving going to Christmas, we find more people find themselves depressed. Because they go back in their mind and they evaluate themselves. Did I make good decisions? And the ones that I didn't make so good, guess what? I feel that I let someone down or I am a failure. And you'll find out that during this time of year, the, med the medical field, the educational field, a lot of fields have a, have a hard time here. Because I know in religion or in a the theology life when we read the Bible and we get interpretation is that um, there's a heavenly home after life and I understand that but we still spend a lot of money to keep Big Mama and Uncle Joe living and what happened is a lot of from depression, we goes into dimension, or we goes into Oz Towers, or we goes in some type of stroke, or we go into all these elements where the body fails us, and all those things are added to it. So not only that that uh, the children are unhappy, or the family members are unhappy, and sometimes we go into this field where we can't control it, and in, and to be in a space or a situation where you have no control, it becomes very frustrating. In the healthcare field, that's one field I do know about. Um, we have people who, and they share with me, he said, Taylor, I'm just tired of being sick. And I said, wow, I'm just tired of hurting. So what happened is some give their life up. We talked about last week, remember? Um, that life has value and don't give it up. Things will turn turn better. But also, if you have family members that you feel or that you see signs of them going into depression, talk to them. I mean, if you just do no more than listen to them, try to get them some help. Because some people go into that space, some have a hard time coming out and some don't come out. And how you can tell when the person is going in, um, in, in the space of depression is when they're always negative. It's just plain negative. If it rains, they find something wrong with it. If the sun shines, they find something wrong with it. If it's a good day, they find something wrong with it. they just plain negative, 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 negative. That is a good indicator. When you find a person that um, they don't see the value of life, that's the indicator. If you find a person who seems like they see life as hopeless, these are indicators. And when you find people who cannot stabilize their life in any kind of way, that's the indicator. Or people take it on too much and you know that they can't deliver. 
those are indicators. I was with someone uh, yesterday, and I was in church. Believe it or not, I was, I was in church. Um, and the pastor was uh, preaching, and he was talking about marriage. And he said that um, marriage is not always good every day. You either do things to make it better, or you just make put a, a cover over it. And he asked the audience, he says, um, can you go back in your life and find someone that you were so in love with? And can you identify what happened to make you guys split up, you know, or separate or whatever? And the lady beside me, I think she said she was 65, I think what it was. And she said, that's a long ways to go back. So, so I said to her, I said, but um, can you find this guy that you were so in love with? And she said, yes. And she said, if I could have only worked on it, we could still be here today. And I believe that's across the board there. If I could have only worked on it. So my point here, if you see your health, your mental health, is going the wrong way, work on it. If you see your loved one health is going the wrong way, work on it. But in order to work on some things, sometimes we need to settle down and be truthful to who we are. Don't lie to yourself. Tell yourself the truth. If, if you don't tell no one else the truth, tell yourself the truth. And those things that kind of help us out with depression. And also, remember this here. There's nothing perfect in life. And you can't medicate yourself out of it. You have to sit down and try to find a balance in life to make it through. Because once you go in depression, it's difficult to come out. So try to study your body. Try to um, sit down and, and be truthful. Or even just write some things down and just say, you know what? This not right. I feel myself self going in this space that I'm going in. It's not right. Talk to yourself. It's all right. Talk to yourself. Because if you don't, you're going to be a place where you're always talking to yourself and you cannot give an answer. So let's remember, this time of year, you're going to find a lot of people who are slipping into depression. Uh, where things are not right for them. Sometimes they evaluate whether they, they are uh, successful or they're not. And when they go into this, this space, it's very difficult to come out. I wish you well. And remember, you only have one life. That's all you have, unless you believe in reincarnation. So, Try to do everything you can to, to add good wellness to their life. Men, folks, go and get your physical. Men, folks, study your body. Men, folks, evaluate your life. The reason why I said men, folks, because I'm a man, and so, uh, research has shown us that we men put things on the side put it on the side, and put it on the side, then we find out that it's too late. So men, folks, let's do a better job. Also, um, like for you, remember that um, the N1 Network um, is sponsored by the Carla Malone Group. Um, um, it's one of the best PR uh, companies in the South, or the Mid-South, and that's a whole lot of area there. And if if you have an idea of wanting to start a company or an idea of wanting to uh, start a movement or an idea of wanting to initiate something, she can help you or the group can help you from an idea to a movement where you can implement it. I was in a, a group a couple of weeks ago and I was um, the audience was a lot of elderly people you know and many were saying that if they can do life over there's some things that they wish they could initiate it or some things that they, uh, they wish that um, 
they could have brought forth. Don't get to the end of your life and say, I wish I could have started this company. I wish I could have did this. I wish I could have did Hey, try it. I mean, try it. But don't try it free will, though. Call Dietrich Malone. I said, Dietrich, I don't have a whole lot of money, but Dietrich, but this, this is what I do have. Can you help me take Big Mama recipe on jelly and show me how I can uh, launch this uh, this venture? Are you say, Dietrich, I've been studying behavior science, and I have an idea or instrument or a tool to help people not to go in depression or help people who are in depression come out of depression. It's a scientific, I need some help on this right here. Or you say, Mr. Malone, I have some software that I've created for cyberspace to keep people from going in and stealing everything. Whatever that ideal is, what, whatever it is, don't sit on it. Call the Call of Malone group. And I really believe that um, you sit down one day and you say thank you. As always, call someone, text someone, even take a message and put it around a pigeon and fly it to someone and tell them that you appreciate them. And I thank you for your space in life.